impresses the parents by how well she knows their child, but she also impresses her teammates after the meetings with some of her other notices. Following is a brief poem to honor Joan and her almost superhuman attention to detail. She knows when a student did not study for a quiz, and she knows whether the father's tie is teal, aquamarine, or turquoise. <laughs> she knows when a student has an unruly binder, and she knows when the mother's diamond ring has quality clarity, cut, and color. She knows if a student did not write in her planner, and she knows that for weeks, it's not been checked by her father. She knows when a student did not bring a healthy lunch, and she knows whether the mother's bag is Louis Vuitton or Tory Burch. <laughs> if only she could bequeath some of these powers to her colleagues, we would all be better teachers and dressed in Oscar-worthy ensembles. <laughs> to her students' benefit, some of Joan's observation skills must have rubbed off on them. Here are some observations that students have made about the amazing work Joan does with them each and every day. And I, we may need a moment to set up the laptop, so there might be a brief pause between now and the observations. So stay tuned. Congratulations, Joan. We're very happy for you. Thank you. Yeah.
Because I wasn't going to say Lucy, I probably would have wasted some trees at all. I love Miss Sarah Chee. She's like, um, um, she made me like appreciate some of these more because I told her again and on. She always helped like all the kids learn everything they could the best way possible. Yeah. I can't wait to do it. organization systems, planner checks, and other systematic approaches, I knew that Joan would volunteer to be the point person before I had to admit that that was not my greatest strength. <laughs> and matriarch to homics, um, to Team 6-1, to the social studies department, the department chairs, me, Susan, Kendra, Erica, Abby, all your other school kids. Um, I'll miss our mini meetings after our team meetings. Joan would stop me on the way out and say, Evan, so what's going on? And uh, sometimes that was referring to the kids and, you know, that may have been struggling. And then I wrote or the parents that were um, inquiring. The buzz in the building were just checking up on me to make sure my personal life was okay. And uh, I promised Kathy I'd keep it short. Okay, I acknowledge that she threatened my personal safety. <laughs> and then I'd keep it brief. Um, so in an effort to do that, um, and to use humor to avoid the uncomfortable sentiments. Um, we love you, Joan. I think I speak for everybody here. Um, and the loss to Hamid and the children that you have, you know, impacted here, um, you know, is difficult. But if I look at the, the half full portion of that glass, you know, the fact that we got to know you and share this time with you and the children who you've touched, um, you know, is a, a wonderful, wonderful thing. Um, it's been a pleasure to work with you and uh, a pleasure to know you. And in closing, I wrote that, you know, such good fortunes are in store for you. Weddings, speech homes, hopefully no more surgery. Um, and we wish you the best of luck. And every endeavor that you embark on, um, and that we know that uh, you'll be missed and loved and that you'll come back to watch over us because you'll have to check up to make sure we're doing everything right <laughs> and, uh, and to let us know how wonderfully your life is going. So good luck to you.
when Joan first announced her retirement to Evan and me over coffee in December, I really wasn't happy. In fact, I believe my reaction was, no, you can't, we're not ready. Thus began my campaign to convince Joan to stay. Eventually, I came to accept her decision, but six months later, Joan, I'm still not ready for you to retire. Probably because Joan and I have a very special relationship. She has been more than just a mentor and a colleague. She has become my work mom. Over the years, we have developed many Joan and Susan traditions. Green tea with team meetings, flowers for birthdays and now retirements, holiday shopping at the Westchester. <laughs> I've come to consult Joan for advice on many personal items, from which color to paint to my apartment, to dragging her out to the north parking lot to help me decide what dress to wear to a family wedding. When I needed an opinion, I knew I could always go upstairs and see Joan. It wasn't just personal advice that I turned to Joan for over the years. I'd also consult with her right before a big meeting with a parent or a formal observation, and Joan was always ready to help. I knew Joan was a master teacher from my very first day teaching seventh grade. How did I know? Her teachers would proclaim how incredible Mrs. Iorucci was. For five years, I inherited Joan's 6-1 students on my then team 7-1. Every September, my new students would share their very detailed stories and praise from Mrs. Iorucci. The cave paintings, the Iceman, the Egypt Project, Joan truly made an impression on all of her kids. This is because she puts her entire heart into everything she does. Whether modifying a lesson or a test for students, <coughs> writing several comments on their essays, or offering extra help at lunch, Joan always goes the extra mile. She has always been enthusiastic about her craft and curriculum, and Joan's students have benefited tremendously from her devotion. For the past two years, I've had the pleasure to work with Joan as a grade level colleague. When I was apprehensive about taking on a new challenge, Joan was ready to guide. Joan, I have learned so much from you. From reading actively to the difference between an agora and an acropolis in ancient Greece, you have made a tremendous impression on me and are the reason I'm a better teacher today. So it's time to say congratulations and not goodbye. There are many great adventures that await you. To Matt and John, thank you for sharing your Joan with us for so many years. Joan, thank you for all your support and in every way over the years you've been for me. I will treasure our relationship forever and I know our friendship will continue to grow. taught me like she taught her students who all commented to plan ahead. I've been working on this speech for weeks. <laughs> Joan Iorochi is retiring. Lame, right? Yeah. It took me weeks to come up with that opening line. That's what I thought. I thought, oh, lame, until my son interrupted me and said, what does retiring mean? After much thought on how to accurately define the word, I responded, it means Finishing, finish teaching. Well, as soon as those words left my mouth, I knew they wouldn't work. Joan will never be finished teaching. She may be finished teaching at the Homics Middle School, but she, like all true masters of the art of teaching, will never be finished teaching. I met Joan 17 years ago as a pioneer. I know that, no, that word doesn't go with Joan. Uh, Joan and I, along with some of the other adventurous spirits, such as Janet LaPrey, Alice Dunning, Bob Ankowitz, and Alex Prucci, just to name a few, were the first sixth grade teachers to venture from their elementary school self-contained homelands to the wild west of the Hamas. <laughs> 17 years ago on a Saturday morning in late August, I sat at the Nautilus Diner across with the other pioneers planning our first year in the new land. I sat across from a woman with the most beautiful green eyes that I had ever seen, and I knew they held incredible wisdom. I was right. This pioneer was not in it for mere survival, but more for success, glory, and greatness. 
Joan became my mentor, and more importantly, my friend. Joan's impressive knowledge of the ancient world curriculum goes without saying. Even though, as her husband Matt often remarks, the ancient world hasn't changed, Joan manages to make it teaching it new every year. So Matt, all that time that Joan devotes to her work at home is just proof of her creativity and ingenuity in applying the ever-changing art of pedagogy to the ancient world curriculum. Okay, so my husband shook his head at that last line. <laughs> proof of her creativity and ingenuity in applying the ever-changing art of pedagogy to the ancient world curriculum. No one will know what that means, he commented. But I know you all know what that means, and I know you all can appreciate how hard that is to achieve. Joan's teaching expertise, however, is not to be outdone by her expertise on life. I've been lucky enough to develop a relationship with Joan that goes beyond a professional one. Joan, I will never forget when you came by my home to give me a beautifully embroidered handkerchief to be used on my wedding day to elegantly dry my tears. Or the time we drove up to Albany together for a professional development workshop. I was still a little intimidated by you at that time, but by the end of the three hour drive, I knew that you were not only an inspiration to my teaching, but a great woman who I could talk to. So talk I did. You listened to my countless emotional rants about my own crazy children, my marriage ups and downs, my aging mother, just to name a few. You always got me off the ledge and empowered me to make good decisions professionally as well as personally. Thank you. Elaine, I believe you're next in line to be taught, inspired, and deeply loved by Joan Iorochi, who will never be finished teaching. hard to follow all of that beautiful <laughs> tribute. And I think, uh, I didn't speak to the other folks who spoke tonight, but I think just by natural tendency, what I put together kind of sums up everything that everyone else said. So I do have an assistant today, and we will, maybe you're too short. <laughs> oh! <laughs> she's, got, she's gonna hold up this sign. When, when, uh, when we're cued, and then she's going to hold this one up, and we'll have a little audience participation. So when you see this, you will say, check. All right? You got it? All right. Last year, when Joan stood here to speak on my behalf, she talked about the powerful match made in teacher heaven that occurred when she, Lorraine, and I started working together in the South House 11 years ago. Powerful matches are really at the heart of what great teaching is all about. Matches between colleagues, as you've heard so eloquently tonight, and most importantly, matches between teachers and their students. If I had to create an assessment rubric to determine excellence in teaching, I would just have to look at Joan's career. And I would know what highly effective looks like. So, I would only need six objectives, and let's see how they might apply. Is everybody ready? <laughs> A quiet, organized, and powerful leader throughout her long career, Joan has managed to forge matches with colleagues that are steadfast and beneficial. From her dedication and commitment to the elementary programs she designed, to the establishment of the mentor program, to her role as team mother hen, to her role as department chair extraordinaire, she has enhanced the teaching lives of numerous colleagues. This smart, humble, and hardworking lady has contributed to and supported the fine professionals who work across this district. So that rubric objective number one might be. Highly effective. Let me read. Let, I'm going to read the um, the rubric. 
Hi. All right. This is, the, this is the objective, is able to create and sustain powerful matches between herself and others, thereby having a positive impact on her colleagues and the school community at large. Highly effective. Highly effective. Highly effective. Highly effective. <laughs> oh, I'm here, yeah. <laughs> All right, Joan has made the matches with the students in her classroom look effortless. But as we know, her success is the result of her creativity, her compassion, her willingness to spend inordinate amounts of extra time with individual students, and her mastery of social studies content. So let's see, what would that objective be? Number two, goes the extra mile to ensure the success of her students. What do we think? Highly effective? Check. 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 Thank you. That's good. That's right. All right, get it up. <laughs> My extraordinary teaching skills were not the only reason I made a personal match with Joan. She's kind and gentle and a great listener. Her work exemplifies to me the notion that all children can learn. Her understanding and implementation of solid literacy teaching in social studies and her loyalty to her principles immediately endeared her to me. Children and parents alike instantly recognize her integrity. So I think that objective might be, number three, talks the talk and walks the walk. Highly effective? Yeah. Yeah. I knew Joan was great when I first met her, but later that year when I saw this fashionista dressed as <laughs> Cleopatra, walking down the hall with King Ramses and Queen Nefertiti behind her, I said, oh, this is my kind of girl. The objective number four, makes the curriculum come alive. Highly effective. Yes. Yes. Children always want to be close to her. They clamor for her attention, even as they are passing by in the halls. Tough, aloof, eighth grade former students instantly change their demeanor. And they greet her with open-faced sixth grade expressions as they walk by. Joan truly meets the needs of every child, and I know that because the students who came to my reading class always felt very comfortable and empowered in her class. Objective number five, we're almost done. Because <laughs> I've been threatened with bodily harm too. Uh, number five, positively impacts the lives of her students. Highly effective. Yeah. Yeah. When Joan was not at work, she managed to raise two great kids, take care of her parents and in-laws, tend to her beloved dog, dabble in the buying and selling of art and ephemera, soak in the ever-present culture available in New York City, such as plays and jazz at Lincoln Center, host every holiday, travel with her darling husband, Matt, to their place in Florida and points beyond, and this year, I don't know if everyone knows this, amidst the flurry of trying to use up all the, all the strings of retirement, she has helped to plan and ready herself for her son John and Elaine's wedding 16 days from today. Oh. <laughs> all the while, staying calm, as Ellen said, and the kids said, and collected, and very busy doing her job at the home. How would that objective look on the rubric? I don't know, last but not least, number six, has the ability to gracefully handle a busy life and be a great teacher, too. Highly effective. Joan, thank you for all of your contributions to Homics and to this district. We all wish you peace and contentment in this new phase of your life. And thank you for making the match with me as a friend, because I truly treasure our friendship. I look forward to us having a fine glass of wine together in lieu of a Dunkin' Donuts coffee <laughs> while we play around with making a possible objective for a retirement rubric. And that, here's one possibility. While sipping wine in the afternoon, she is able to bask in the knowledge that she did her best to be a highly effective teacher in a precious and challenging profession. Highly effective? Yes. Yes.
Thank you. And I want to thank Kathy for putting this together as usual every year. She does a beautiful job. Where are you, Kathy? photos. First, my former and present teammates smiled at me approvingly. When I announced to those closest to me at Homix that I was retiring, I was touched by their genuine sadness at the thought of me not being there every day. Next, there were some DC pictures. Evan, Susan Douglas, and I standing in front of the World War II Memorial and remembering leading the group with Susan on a long walk through DC, students pleading, no, begging us to slow down. While at the Vietnam Memorial with Rich, a group of Vietnam vets visiting the site for the very first time were brought to tears when our students spontaneously applauded upon hearing that they had served for our country. What a powerful memory. A photo taken at one of our many baby showers with recently retired Chris Manzi, reminded me of how I enjoyed our daily chats. My career in pictures continued as I glanced at a sea of orange shirts on sixth grade central students. Bob Ankowitz and I were the sixth grade team, and while ordering class graduation shirts, we were asked if we wanted black or orange. We responded at the same exact time, Bob, black, me, orange. Bob, being a reasonable man, usually acquiesced gracefully. With a huge timeline in the background and in the foreground, a group of seven pioneers, including the now Ann Greeny, the then Ann Greeny, now Savage, I was looking at the first back to school night for sixth grade at Homics. I designated those of us who made the move two homics pioneers because we ventured into unknown and at times tumultuous waters. I recently had the pleasure of my niece, Annie, spending a few days with us at homics to observe classes. What should I tell her about the career of a teacher? Fortunately, throughout my tenure, I have always been appreciated by administrators, students, colleagues, and parents. When I was preparing lessons at home, as Anne so graciously said, Matt would say to me, Joan, what are you doing? Ancient Egyptian history hasn't changed. And due to modern technology, that's only somewhat true. However, what kept me engaged were my passions for, my, for the ancient world cultures and also my, my students. Because when you are teaching in a middle school, these changes can play, take place from minute to minute. Annie, my advice to you is to respect each child in your class. Get to know their strengths, celebrate them. Get to know their challenges, provide them with the skills to work through them. Kids know when you are passionate and knowledgeable about what you teach, and they also know when you really enjoy being with them. There are two men who I know are with me in spirit this evening. The first, Rick North. Rick convinced me to make the move from Central to Homix and made sure I never regretted that decision. Seth, thank you for continuing that support. Always with me is my dad. He taught me hard work and self-respect makes the pathway to success. Today was the last full day of classes for the year. As I usually do, I said goodbye to my students and told them to have a great afternoon. However, today my thoughts brought me back to my first day of student teaching, not that many years ago, at Ardley Middle School. My reaction at the end of today mirrored what I thought that very first day. I love my job. Thank you.